Good morning, this is the Lulich Corner. I'm Jordan Lulich, and today we've got the pleasure to sit down with Ryan Butler, who is the elected official for the Clerk of Courts Office here in Indian River County. Ryan, first off, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, I think a, a good question just to start with our conversation is, is many people probably are not aware or they don't know what the clerk of court does and they probably don't even aware, uh, they're not aware that the clerks is in an elected position. So what exactly does your office do? Well, how much time do you have? <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, we actually do quite a bit at the clerk's office. Yeah. Um, we, we, we wear a lot of hats. Um, I, I guess, first of all, the thing that most people are probably familiar with is we're the clerk of court. Right. And so as the clerk of court, it's our job to maintain all of the uh, the files, if you will, for the thousands of court cases that are currently ongoing. Um, but we don't have paper files anymore. That's so nice. So it's all electronic. Okay. But in every one of those cases, attorneys and parties will file documents through an electronic database. And then we have to pull those documents in, make sure they're cataloged and indexed correctly because mm -hmm. the judges rely on those documents. Right. So, you know, that's a, a large portion of what we do at the courthouse. But we also manage um, the entire fee and fine structure for the criminal justice system. So mm -hmm. if you have to pay a fee because you got a traffic ticket mm -hmm. or you're fined by the judge or maybe you uh, forgot to vaccinate, license, or harness your dog and got one of those animal control tickets, um, <laughs> you have to pay that through the clerk's office, and, and we do that as well. Okay. All right, good. So uh, where exactly are your offices located? Well, and we do more, though, than just clerk of court. Okay. Don't forget that. Okay. Uh, we're also the uh, county comptroller. Okay. Um, and it's one of those things in, I think, around 1838, the uh, clerks of, of Florida were, were given the job of clerk of court, mm -hmm. and then they became the county comptroller. And those things are uh, very dissimilar functions, but we, we do both. And in and, and almost every county in the state except one, the clerk is also the comptroller and the clerk of court. Okay. Uh, in Orange County, there is an elected comptroller and an elected clerk of court, hmm. but most counties do it. Yeah. do both. Um, as the comptroller, we're actually the bookkeeper for the county, and we're the internal auditor for the county. Um, so all of the county's uh, annual budget, the $500 million that they, they allocate every year, um, when that money has to be spent, uh, it goes through our office. We're the ones that write the check. We keep the books. We keep track of that money. So it sounds like your office needs to be meticulous. I think that's in, in no matter whether it's for, for the court system, whether it's for on, on the budget side and the audit side, I think an attention to detail and, and the, and the uh, ability to be meticulous, I think is an absolute necessity for, for your office. Absolutely, because a lot of people depend on us. Uh, the county obviously depends on us with, with bookkeeping. Um, we are audited uh, every year by external auditors, uh, as is the county as well. In fact, yeah. every governmental agency in, in the county has an external audit every year. And so uh, much of our time is spent complying with the audit requirements. But there's a reason for that, because you want to make sure that when you're dealing with public money that's being spent legally yep, and that we know where it is and it's being kept safely. And, and so that's one of our primary functions as a county comptroller. So as the comptroller, it's you're, you're holding the county almost accountable. Is that a, is that a fair way of looking at it? Right. Um, we're, we're the check and balance, if you yes. will. So the, the county commission decides how to spend the money. Mm -hmm. um, we decide whether it's being spent lawfully. And of course, there's a difference between spending money lawfully and spending it wisely. We don't have a say in how they spend it as long as it's lawful. Right. But it's our job to make sure it's spent lawfully. Right. So so part of part of that role is that do you have to analyze laws and statutes to determine to make sure that the way the spending is going about is done so in a in a way that's permitted under Florida statutes? Yes, because issues do come up um, because there are so many... Florida statutes, as you know, yep. uh, dealing with how government may spend its money. Yep. Um, and, and there are certain um, restrictions on, on how you spend that money and, and the source of that money, because sometimes you take in money for one purpose and you're only allowed to spend it on certain purposes, not other purposes. Right. And so we have to make sure that the money that was taken in for, you know, for example, um, we have an optional sales tax in this county. Well, an optional sales tax can't just be spent on anything you want. Right. It's limited. And we have to make sure the optional sales tax money is spent on things that are appropriate for optional sales Allocated tax. the right way. Exactly. So do you think you're, and for those of you do, that don't know, Mr. Butler is, isn't a licensed attorney. And so do you think that you're, 
um, your, your, your years practicing law and your legal education has given you um, the ability to help decipher what should be a permissible spending and what should not be a permissible spending? Without a doubt. Um, I think it's been invaluable really to have that legal knowledge. And, and you know, as an attorney, um, just being able to, to know how to do the legal research, how to find the statutes and make those decisions, I think is, is very helpful. And how to understand them. And how to understand yeah. them. And, yeah. and because as you know, you may read a statute and a court may have interpreted it in a way that uh, you and I wouldn't look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's what it means. Right. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. So you mentioned before that, you know, as far as the general public, they may be coming to your office to, to pay for different citations or to pay for different um, uh, matters that, that they were um, cited for or assessed for. Um, and so where, where can they find you in the event that they needed to come in or even to just record a document like we were talking about before we get started? Where, where can they find and where, where can they go? Uh, throughout the county. Sure. And, and like the official recorder, that's another hat that we wear. Um, if you record a notice of commencement because you get a new roof or you're getting a new fence or a pool yep. um, or new construction, or even if you're recording your marriage license, death certificate, death certificate, anything yep. that, uh, you know, a deed or a mortgage, for example, right. That's recorded at the courthouse. Right. Um, and there are a couple of ways you can do that. Um, the first place that we encourage everybody to look is online. Because every fee, fine, filing fee for a lawsuit, for example, can be paid online. Mm -hmm. And you can go to our website, IndianRiverClerk.com, and you can hit the link and go ahead and make that payment and, and take care of it. If, if you're filing something like a lawsuit, you can do that through Florida's e-filing portal, and then you can file directly. You can pay through the portal as well. Right. Um, with recording, you can file them electronically. Um, there are services out there that will allow you to for a fee. Um, <laughs> and we don't get that money, but yep. um, there are some private services that will submit documents for you for recording, um, or you can come in and do it in person. And you can come into the courthouse, or now if you're in North County, we just opened an off office up here, okay. I think August 14th or 15th. We oh, nice. Had Very our, recent. Our grand opening. Good. Um, and so it's right here in the Sebastian Corners shopping plaza next to the uh, property or the tax collector's office. Yep. Um, and actually the property appraiser is coming in next to us in a couple of weeks. So okay, it's good. going to be a full service County office right there. Excellent. Right but, off on us one. Right on us one. Okay. Yep. Good. Um, and so, uh, are you, you mentioned before it's going to be a full service plaza, but as far as the, the services that the clerk's office offers, is that also full service or, or is it just a limited scope since it's a satellite office? It's a full service office. Um, the only thing you can't do at this office is attend court. Okay. So if you have to go to court, you have to go to Vero to go to court. Okay. Um, but anything else that you could do at the courthouse in Vero, you can do here in Sebastian. And, um, now right now we're open Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays okay. from eight 30 to five. Um, and that's because we, we, we didn't add any new personnel. So we're mm -hmm. borrowing personnel from the courthouse to work up here. The plan is to, of course, go five days a week once word gets out that we're open yep. and, and we get more business. Get a little bit busier. Sure. Makes sense. But anything, if you need to pay a ticket, if you need to get a marriage license, if you need to get a passport, um, you can file a small claims lawsuit. You can file a document for recording like a deed or a mortgage. Yep. Um, you can do that at the uh, Sebastian office. So you can actually go in for a passport renewal? A passport renewal, or just if you need a new passport, you okay. can go in. Um, all of our clerks who are working in the Sebastian office are passport agents. Okay. Um, so they can handle any sort of passport questions that, that you may have um, and, and handle that for you. Good, good. So what, what are ways that the clerk is trying to better serve the public by implementing or, or using technology? And, and I, I'm not sure if this is something you've looked into, but AI, I mean, in the last year, AI has increased exponentially as far as in the media, online, and just how people are using it. So what are ways right now the clerk better serves the public by the use of technology? And what role do you think AI will have in the next few years to come as far as the clerk's office goes? So one of the things I really wanted to do um, since taking office was to modernize our systems. Um, and, and I actually started that a couple of years ago uh, with the office. I don't know if you remember what the clerk's office website looked like two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. but it was the same website that we'd had for about 15 years. Yep. Um, <laughs> hadn't been updated in a while. Yep. So now we have a nice modern website uh, with lots of links and the ability to 
for example, pay online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you click on a link and you go to a payment center and you can pay any number of things that you might need to pay for, whether that be a traffic fine or pay a filing fee or um, you can pay for, if you've ordered public records, you can right. pay for your public records through that, that link as well. Um, so just having that ability to go online and do it and make it more convenient is one of the ways that we've, we tried to, to modernize. Um, also, all of our foreclosure and tax deed auctions that take place at the courthouse, we used to do it on the courthouse steps. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we get Wesley Davis to come down and conduct a live auction, which was fun. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's not the most convenient for people to have to come down there and have a, a live auction. How long ago is that? Uh, it's been a, a number of years, okay. actually. It's been a number okay. of years. Um, but we, we have Real Auction, which is, is a third-party vendor that we, we have uh, partnered with. Yep. And they run the online auctions. And it's really easy for people who like to bid on, on those properties. Well, because foreclosures and tax foreclosures deeds. Foreclosures and tax deed sales. Yep. Um, and, and one thing I should mention, because we, we do get this question a lot, is um, any buyer needs to be really careful. If you're bidding on a tax deed sale or a foreclosure sale, um, do your homework. Mm -hmm. Because just because you're the winning bidder doesn't mean you're going to win title free and clear. Right. You might be bidding on a second lien or an HOA lien, and it might be subject to a first mortgage. So do your title search, do your homework, and make sure you're aware of what you're bidding on. It's something that we're constantly having conversations with clients. We, we had a couple scenarios where they called us up, and they found out that they, they, they won the, the bid on, on the uh, auction site, but there was still a first mortgage that was a substantial amount of money on the property, and so they didn't they didn't quite have the equity and the the value that they thought they won. So that's a really good point. Yeah, and that and unfortunately that happens a couple of times a month where someone mm. doesn't do all the homework and thinks that hey, I, I just won this property for three thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you you won a property, but it's got an eighty thousand dollar mortgage on it, and right. now you're stuck with that. So right. what do you do? Now you got to um, start paying it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we, we do get some unhappy people when they find out. But we, we put warning labels all over the Real Auction website to let everybody know that they need to do their homework and, and be very careful. And, of course, we all also tell them, consult an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The, do your due diligence. Yep. So, um, and just to go, were there any other ways as far as uh, what you've done to better serve the public as sure, far as technology sure. goes? Sure, sure. And you mentioned AI, for example. Yeah. So um, all of our court records... Um, that are not confidential are actually available online. Uh, we have the court records available online, and we have the official records, right. which are not court records, but the deeds and mortgages, things like that, that are mm -hmm. also available online. And um, there are a couple of ways to do that. Y you can just go to our website and click the link to search for court records or official records. You can also become a registered user, mm -hmm. which gives you more access rights if you're a registered user and and, and that's for court records mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because the florida supreme court um has a, a very complicated spreadsheet <laughs> <laughs> called the access security matrix okay um and depending on your role in the system yep um that determines your access rights to court records through the internet hmm. Um, some records are not available through the internet by by law. For example, family court records, right? Um, you just can't get access to that unless you're the attorney of record. That's right. different. Um, but if if you, if you you just want access to family court records, you have to go to the courthouse or the Sebastian office and then use one of our computers there. Um, but we use AI to look for personal information like social security numbers hmm. and account numbers in documents that are submitted for filing. Interesting. And that AI will pick those numbers out. And then we have a human who looks at it yeah. and verifies that, you know, yes, we need to redact that or no, it's okay not to redact that. Um, so that's one way that we're using artificial intelligence at the courthouse to try to to uh, redact those records. To be more, to have that more attention to detail like we were talking about before. So it's a tool for your team members. It's not necessarily replacing team members. Right, no, we still have yeah. a, we still have human eyes on, on top of it after yeah. that because the, the last thing we want is for somebody's social security number or other protected personal data to get out there. Right. And um, as you know, being an attorney, sometimes attorneys will file things in the court record with a social security number on it. Right. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you have to, yeah. but sometimes it, it just gets in there anyway, or maybe there's an account number right. that's right there for everybody to see, and, and we don't want that. So that's that, sensitive, confidential info. Yeah. Exactly. Um, something else that, that, that we have done um, is the, um, we have a live court docket now. If you go to the courthouse, you can see this. Mm -hmm. um, we've got it on monitors. If you go to our website, at the very top of the website, you can click on, on the banner, 
and it tells you exactly which cases are set that day in okay. court, what time, what judge, what courtroom. So if you're ever interested in knowing uh, what time or, or date that a certain hearing is going to happen. Or courtroom. That's convenient. Courtroom, you can right. just go on there and so you know where you're going when you get there. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, does your office use social media at all as far as... We do the, now. Okay. We do now. Okay. We, we, we didn't prior to July 1st pretty much. Um, okay. But, but now we, uh, we did start an Instagram page and we started a Facebook page as Good. well because I, I was told... Uh, we started out with Instagram and then somebody said, well, you know, people who are over 50 don't really use Instagram. They use Facebook. That's true. Um, so we went ahead and started a Facebook page as well. It, it, you know, yeah. we're new at it. We're fledgling. Um, but we're trying to use that to, to get the word out. And of course, any announcements that, that we need to make about courthouse closures or jury duty, for example, yeah. we're making postings on those sites uh, about that to, to try to better serve the public. Okay. You know, because like, like jury, for example, um, that's another example of, of technology. Right now, if you get a summons for jury duty, yep. um, it's a piece of paper that has a phone number on it. And it mm-hmm. tells you to call back on a certain day at a certain time to and, find out if you're needed. And your number so-and-so out of so many people. Yep. Exactly. And, and so there's a ton of phone calls that come into the courthouse. And after 5 o'clock on the Friday before jury selection, mm-hmm. because uh, we summon about 550 jurors a week. Um, don't really need that many, but we don't know sometimes how many jurors are needed right. the following Monday. You so need to have them ready. Got to have them ready, right? right? And, and usually that number gets down to, you know, maybe we need 100 people to come in. Okay. Um, we have something called Jury Web, which is, is a new system that will be up and running in a couple of weeks. And it allows anybody who gets a summons to go online to our website and to register mm-hmm. as the juror with their juror number. And that will allow them to get notifications through email about their jury service. It also allows them to request any sort of excusal or continuance that they might be uh, eligible for. Uh, right now you have to call or yep. send a letter. You can do it yourself now online. In this in this online. In, in this online yeah. application. That's convenient, it's convenient and it's also efficient from the, like, the perspective of your office. But I mean, I, I had a, a summons not too long ago, a few months ago, but I was one of those people that didn't get a chance to call in before five o'clock on a Friday. I was Monday was was jury duty, but I was almost last, you know, in the pool that was called. Um, so they told me kindly Monday morning that I didn't have to report. But it would have been nice to be able to have that so I can plan out my week ahead. So that that's a very convenient tool that I think is going to benefit a lot of people that that are being called. Right. It's great just to get an email that Friday and say, and now you don't have to call anybody. It's right. right there. You know, you don't have to show up, or maybe you do have to show up. Right. Um, but it tells but you, you can what plan time. accordingly. Yeah. A- absolutely. And yeah. Um, I, I think that's going to be very useful. The key there is is educating people and encouraging them to sign up for it yep. and take advantage of that technology. Right. Um, the, the jury questionnaire. Um, if, if you come for for jury duty, we have a questionnaire mm-hmm. that we hand out that morning, and everybody mm-hmm. fills it out. Um, and that's for the benefit of the judge and for the parties in the courtroom. Right. That's also on this this website. Okay. So you can fill out your jury questionnaire very early, hit submit, and it's done. And Very that nice. will speed things up on Monday morning when you come in for jury duty <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because sometimes, and, and you know how it is being an attorney, mm-hmm. the judge may have 15 or 20 cases that are set for trial. Right. And uh, we've got jurors that come in at 830, let's say, and they would like to just, hey, check me in, take me to the courtroom. It doesn't work that way. No. Um, but the faster we can get those questionnaires done beforehand, then the later we can call the jurors in so they don't have to wait around as long. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so if someone is involved in some type of legal case and they don't have the resources or they just don't want to go about their case uh, with without an attorney, what, what services are available? What services does your office make available to those people? So we're really excited about this. Um, this is a brand new um, part of our office that we're starting and we should be up and running this month with it. Um, it's called the Access to Justice Self-Help Center. Okay. Um, and actually the county commission voted to name it after uh, Clerk Jeffrey Smith, okay. who just retired as of June 30th. Right. Um, it, it was a dream that he had for a long time, um, but due to funding, we were never able to to uh, to create this, this self-help center. Um, but fortunately through uh, the United Way and the Johns Island Community Service League and Johns Island uh, Service Foundation, mm-hmm. um, they have fully funded the self-help center. They're paying for everything, even the staff who work there. So is what, what is the self-help and center? And so the self-help center yeah. is anybody who um, doesn't have an attorney, 
in a family case or a civil case, whether it be county court, circuit court, or small claims, um, no, no criminal cases. We, we have the public defender's office can handle people who sure. don't have attorneys for, for criminal cases. But any civil or probate issues um, or uh, family. family family law cases, child custody issues. Guardianship. Guardianship, if you need uh, an injunction for protection, for example. Evictions. E- evictions, because so many people, uh, landlords often do it themselves right. for, uh, for evictions. Uh, in family court cases, I looked at some numbers, and over 90% of the parties in family court cases in Indian River County did not have an attorney. Wow. Um, wow, and 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 that you know that can be an endless source of frustration for some of our judges. Sure, because they've got case managers who have tried to work with people who don't know the law and, mm-hmm. and can't be expected to learn the law. Yeah, but it's complicated, yeah. and especially in a, in a marital dissolution case, there are, I think there's about twelve or thirteen pleadings that you have to file when you file for for a, a dissolution for a divorce. Right, um, and so we've got a paralegal who's going to be in the self help center, and she is going to be able to assist anybody who needs that help with making sure that they've got the right documents filled out correctly uh, with the information that they need Very to have cool. it processed in court. So there, she's not giving legal advice, but she's assisting with filling those forms out to make sure that they've got the, the documents that are actually required. Exactly, because as deputy clerks, we can't give legal advice. Right. Um, but when we have a paralegal working in the self-help center, um, and, and we actually, uh, she was a case manager for court administration, okay. working in the family division. So she knows the process, the process, she yeah. knows what's required yep. and she knows when she looks at something that maybe it's missing something that the judge is going to need. Yeah. She can tell the party, Hey, you know, the judge cool. requires this. You need to put this in here. And that's free. That service. That's an absolutely free service. Okay. Um, we're also going to be offering consultations with lawyers. Okay. Um, and uh, the plan for that is a nominal fee. I think it's a dollar a minute so that a person can sign up for an appointment to have a consultation with an actual Florida lawyer um, and sit down and talk to them for up to 30 minutes and, and just consultation, not representation. Right. And that's an important distinction. Guidance, information. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like what, what type of uh, lawsuit should I file, for example, right. that attorney can, can consult with you and tell you if you need to do a small claims action or an eviction or a county court action, because uh, there's different requirements for all of those sure. different types of, of uh, depending upon venues. the case and what's involved and the amount. Exactly. Um, so where, where does this paralegal and where does this self help help center? Where is it located? So two locations to start. Okay. Um, as soon as you walk into the courthouse, yes. on your left is the self-help center. Okay. Um, it's an office where uh, court administration used to have their digital court recording. Many years ago, Congressman Dave Weldon had his office in there. Okay. Like a lot of years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's going to be the self. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's going to be the self-help center. And court administration was uh, very gracious, and they moved their digital court recorders out and put them upstairs just so we could have that space. Um, so it's, it's right in the center of the rotunda at the courthouse. Very easy to find. Very convenient. Yep. Yep. So three days a week, she's going to be there. Now, the other two days a week, she's going to be at the Up Center, which is located next to the county administration building. Right. And she's going to have an office there for people who, for whatever reason, can't get to the courthouse or are at the Up Center for uh, for some other reason. Convenience purposes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Ryan, we, we appreciate you coming on. And before we finish up, if people want more information or if they want to take advantage of some of these resources that you talked about today, wh- where do they go and, and how do they find these answers? So I, I guess the best place to go is um, our website. So it's IndianRiverClerk.com um, because all of our information is there. There are lots of links. Uh, even if you don't find what you're looking for there, we have links to uh, other governmental agencies, so you can go there and find that information. Um, and, of course, if that doesn't work, you can always give us a call. Okay. Um, you know, our, our phone number is right there on the website. Um, we, we have a – if you know what department you want, you can call that department directly, or you can call the main line and just say, hey, I'm, I'm not really sure where I need to go, but here's what I'm looking for. Good. All and right. We'll certainly try to get you in the right location. Well, we appreciate you joining us. I'm Jordan Lulich. This was the Lulich Corner, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.